Forgetting all about an in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه وبعد my dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of Gardens of the Pious. Today's episode is number 483, and it will be the second in chapter number 221, and um, the first hadith that we're about to tackle today is hadith number 1232. The hadith is sound hadith. It is collected by Imam uh, Muslim. May Allah have mercy on him. And it is narrated by the great companion Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anhu. In this hadith, Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anhu narrated, Anna Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala, Faslu ma bayna siyamina wa siyami ahli al-kitabi aklatu al-sahar. Faslu ما بين صيامنا وصيام أهل الكتاب أكلة السحر رواه مسلم. So the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said in this hadith, the thing which differentiates between our fasting and the type of fasting that the people of the book observe is eating the sahur meal. In the previous episode, we discussed many hadith concerning the virtues of eating that meal. When the Prophet ﷺ said, تَسَحَرُوا فَإِنَّ فِي السَّحُورِ بَرَكَةً There is a lot of blessings and goodness in eating that meal. Eating or drinking, because you said it can be fulfilled by simply, if you don't have any food, if you don't have the desire to eat, if you drink water. That would do it, if that is your intention. So getting up a few minutes before Fajr, or if you're already up, and then eating or drinking with the intention of fulfilling this sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, of eating or consuming the sahur meal, you will be blessed, and there is plenty of barakah in that. Also in this hadith, Rasulullah ﷺ said, there are a lot of, uh, differences between our fasting and the fasting which is observed by the people of the book concerning the length of the day, the type of fasting, what they eat and what they not, not they eat uh, and so on. Like for us as Muslims, we abstain entirely from eating, from drinking and from sexual relations. In the case of uh, Christianity, they do not do the same. Their fasting is not to eat oil or butter or dairy products or others do not eat meat but they eat and drink other variety of food but they abstain from eating particular types of food but in addition to that because they are not all the same there are different denominations different sects and groups but also they do not prepare for fasting by eating the sahur meal so the Prophet ﷺ said, there is another virtue because you guys and this ummah is very distinct when it comes to their fasting is it is preceded and it is recommended to be preceded by either eating or drinking something that will give you some strength for a few hours which will shorten the fasting hours because our fasting isn't like the fasting of the people of the book. There is also a great significance in eating the sahur meal brothers and sisters which is Moderation, moderation. Some people, particularly youth, assume that if they were to prolong 
the fasting hours that is better for them in respect of reward. But the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, confirms the opposite. So he says that this Ummah most certainly will remain in good condition so long as they delay the Sahur meal and they hasten to eat their breakfast meal or break in their fast at sunset. So the declaration of Imsak and the declaration of breaking your fast must be observed. Even, yani, let's say that you're not, you will assume that you're not really hungry. Break your fast by eating a date. I, I don't want to eat anything, taking a sip of water. So that declares you're not fasting anymore. And that cut it short and it blocks the means which leads to an innovation where somebody assumes that if I extend my fasting uh, five minutes, it will be better. So another person will make it an hour and a third will make it overnight. Then we will extend it to wusal and the Prophet Sallallahu totally forbade the wusal, which is connecting two days of fasting without breaking your fast in between. Uh, similarly, skipping the sahur meal, deliberately assuming that this is better in respect of reward. No, 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 it's not. Rather, the sunnah is entirely the opposite. Tasaharu fa inna fi sahuri barakah. And also another sign that it is a major difference between our fasting and the fasting which is observed by the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. The next chapter is chapter number 222. Babu fadli ta'jeel al-fitri wa ma yuftiru alayhi wa ma yaquluhu ba'd al-iftar. Great. The chapter addresses the superiority of hastening to break the fast and the supplication to say upon breaking it. So basically, we are in, in this chapter are to focus on the last segment of the title, which is what to say at the time of breaking the fast. Because we've already spoken before about the excellence and the superiority of hastening to break your fast once it is sunset. Hadith number 1233 is a sound hadith agreed upon its authenticity collected by the two great Imams Bukhari and Muslim narrated by Sahl ibn Sa'd radiyallahu anhu narrated anna Rasool Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal la yazalu nasu bi khayrin ma ajjalu al-fitra the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said in this hadith the people will continue to do well so long as they hasten to break their fast. We say because that maintains the integrity of the deen and it blocks the means of innovating with the assumption that this is something good. You're adding a great thing in your worship. I, it's like imagine if somebody happen to pray Maghrib four rakahs. So you tell him that, no, 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 Maghrib is only three rakahs. He say, I know, but I want to do something better. You know, what is wrong with you? I'm doing something extra. I'm giving extra. In that particular command, you're not supposed to give extra, nor do less. You just take to it. In the zakah, if you owe 20 grands and you make it 40, that is appreciated by Allah. No problem, because he permitted you to do that, okay? But in the case of the prayers, in the case of the fasting, in the case of the hajj, you just stick to what he said. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallu kama ra'aytu muni usalli. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fal ta'akhudu anni manasikakum. This is in respect of the prayers and the hajj. You just stick to what you uh, were told and what you have seen the Prophet ﷺ doing in respect of Salah and in respect of Hajj. And now in respect of fasting, you said, you guys, so long as you stick to what I said, which is, I eat a Sahur meal. And I like to keep it all the way by the end of the night, 15 minutes or so before the Fajr time. And also I like to hasten to break my fast. So maintaining that is an indication that you're maintaining the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and you're not deviating. You're not following the whispers of a shaitan in respect of adding new things to the religious practices. Okay? 
The following hadith is a hadith collected by Imam Muslim. May Allah have mercy on him. Hadith number 1234. An Abi Atiyyata radiyallahu anhu qal. Dakhaltu ana wa masruqun ala Aisha radiyallahu anha. Faqala laha masruq. Rajulani min ashabi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كلاهما لا يألو عن الخير أحدهما يعجل المغرب والإفطار والآخر يؤخر المغرب والإفطار فقالت من يعجل المغرب والإفطار قال عبد الله يعني ابن مسعود فقالت هكذا كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصنع أجين فقالت من يعجل المغرب والإفطار in this hadith, I'm going to quote upon you the approximate meaning, then I will explain it, insha'Allah. Abu Atiyah, may Allah be pleased with him, said, myself and Masruq, we visited Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. And my companion Masruq said to her, Umm al-Mu'mineen, O mother of the believers, we have two conditions. First is, you know, the two conditions of two of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Both of them are very keen to do what is good. Both of them uh, is very anxious to fulfill the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And none of them abandons the good. Yet one of them, hastens to observe the Maghrib prayer and he then breaks his fast as early as possible at sunset while the other delays delays the iftar and delays the Maghrib prayer whereupon Aisha radiallahu anha said whoever hastens to observe the Maghrib prayer and break his fast yani this is better this is superior he said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu an, فقالت, he quoted her, هكذا كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصنع. This is what the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to do. Okay, the hadith is explaining itself, but in case that we have some youngsters who need further explanation, let me say, in simple English, what the hadith is talking about. Two companions visited Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu anha because he wanted to learn. And they, one of them mentioned uh, something before her to find out which performance is better. We have two companions of the Prophet sallallahu both of them are righteous, mashaAllah, and very keen to do what is good. One of them, his practice is once the sun sets, he prays Maghrib and he breaks his fast. And the Sunnah, by the way, is to break your fast before you pray. Break your fast on dates, on water, before offering the prayer. While the other, he pushes his breaking his fast and the prayer further. A few minutes, he delays it, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Why? Some people say as means of precaution. In case, you never know, maybe the sun is hiding behind the, the mountain. And another will say, you just give it a few more minutes uh, to be in the safe side. So Aisha radiallahu anha understood the question. She said, the one who hastens to offer, uh, to, to break his fast and to offer his Maghrib prayer is better. Why? Because this is how the Prophet sallallahu used to do. His wife is telling us what he used to do first and how he used to observe fasting so that leaves no room for anyone to suggest otherwise brothers and sisters all of that in order to do what is known as saddu zara'ah to block the means of suggesting adding something new to the sharia ah, particularly to the acts of worship وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ 
the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah says, enjoy eating, enjoy drinking, and accordingly having an intimate relationship with your spouses until it is already done. So what people do and they say imsak 15 minutes before Fajr, and imsak means you should stop eating and drinking and you should begin fasting 15 minutes before Fajr is invalid, is pure innovation. Because hatta means all the way until you hear the adhan. And when you hear the adhan, if you still eat and drink after you hear the adhan, you break your fast. Hatta. This is the deadline. ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِنَ اللَّيْلِ Then resume fasting and complete your fasting until it is night. When is it night time? Once sun set. So once the sun set, go ahead and break your fast. The following hadith is another sound hadith in the same regard, hadith number 1236. An Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha aqbal al-laylu min huna, wa adbar al-nahar min huna, wa gharabat al-shamsu, faqali aftara al-sa'in. Muttafaqun alayhi. So, Umar ibn al-Khattab, the great caliph, the great companion of the Prophet ﷺ, Amir al-Mu'mineen, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, إِذَا أَقْبَلَ اللَّيْلُ مِنْ هُنَا which means, when the night comes from here, and the day departs from there, and the sun has set, then it is time for the fasting person to break his fast. And this is, a command, not a recommendation, in the light of all the relating hadith. Breaking your fast by doing anything which declares that you're not fasting anymore. It doesn't really uh, uh, mean that you have to eat a heavy meal, but uh, drinking a sip of water, eating half date, putting anything in your mouth, which indicates that you're not fasting anymore, then eat uh, whenever you want to. Uh, as a matter of fact, I remember, and everybody goes for Umrah in Ramadan, they may uh, agree with it, what I'm going to say. In my experience, once I was flying from the States, coming to, to Saudi Arabia for, uh, for Umrah, and it was a Ramadan, and uh, I decided to fast. You know, I said, you know, I'm not, I'm not the pilot. I'm going to be sleeping. So I decided to fast. And fasting while traveling, it is not recommended if it is a voluntary fasting. But if it is the mandatory fasting, like fasting during Ramadan, then everyone according to their capacity. As long as you don't hurt yourself. You can afford fasting, no problem. So I said, I'm not riding on the back of a camel. I'm, I'm flying. I'm going to be sleeping most of the time. And when I landed to Jeddah, I went to, I was really starving. And most importantly, more than starving, I was very thirsty. Just needed a sip of water. So I, uh, we have some people who, once they walk to the Haram, they drink. So people tell them, hey, you're fasting. They forget that they were fasting because long journey. So it was, uh, you know, after Asr or so, you sit and you wait. And I said to myself, well, I'm not going to be, praying tarawih in the haram tonight because I'm really tired. So what I'm going to do is uh, perhaps pray maghrib, yeah, break my fast, pray maghrib with them, then leave immediately so that I can enjoy eating and drinking, eating all the halal meat and halal burger and all of that. So I was, uh, after I finished my tawaf and umrah sitting, so people started giving me zamzam warar, dates, qajur, tamr, Ajwa, uh, so mashallah in front of me sitting a lot of food, yogurt, milk. So I broke my fast. All of that, and I'm saying soon after Maghrib, I would rush outside the haram, be in the traffic, so I, I need to eat. I was really starving. And subhanallah, they give us about 10, 15 minutes before the iqamah. So we started eating the dates, yogurt, drinking the qawa, the coffee drinking zamzam water. And when I said Allahu Akbar to pray Maghrib, I just realized that's it, I'm full. So I said, you know what, let me sit until 
I pray Isha and Tarawih, and inshallah I can, I can eat after. Basically, uh, I, I felt full until I finished my Tarawih, and every night is like that. And this is what most of the uh, people who are coming for Umrah, no matter where they're coming from, they do. They enter the Haram an hour or two before Maghrib, and they keep sitting until after Isha, after Tarawih is finished. They go to eat, to grab something to eat. Then maybe they come back for tahajjud. So it is not about eating a heavy meal. It's about declaring you're not fasting anymore. Then it's your call. You want to eat, you don't want to eat, it doesn't matter. But do not add a few minutes extra. Assuming by that you will be rewarded because you're giving Allah voluntary few minutes extra. That is not permissible. This is the story. So he says, إِذَا أَقْبَلَ اللَّيْلُ مِنْ هُنَا Because the day and the night, they never become simultaneous. وَمِنْ آيَتِهِ اِخْتِلَافُ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ The alternation of the day and the night. So when, uh, when the night falls, the day is gone. And when the day is breaking, the night is gone. And there is a relationship between that and the sun, sunset and sunrise. So what happens at sunset? Khalas, night fall, and the day is gone. So this is what the Prophet ﷺ said. For you with your naked eye, when you see the sun disappear, that sunset, the day is gone, and night is falling. You don't have to wait until it is really dark. Go ahead and break your fast. فَقَدْ أَفْتَرَ الصَّائِمِ He has used the um, past tense. أَفْتَرَ الصَّائِمِ This is a declaration of breaking your fast. Okay. Now, allow me to go back to the previous hadith. Okay. Which we set it aside. In order to, after we discussed 1234 and 1236. So we drop the middle hadith in order to join the meaning of the 34 and the 36. And now the 35, 1235, it's a Hassan hadith collected by Imam Tirmidhi, in which Rasulullah says, Ahabu ibadi ilayya. Oh, wait a minute. Now it's not only about fulfilling the sunnah and uh, sticking to what the Prophet ﷺ used to do. But guess what? If you really desire to be dearer to Allah and if you think that by prolonging your fasting that is better for you and that will make you superior, guess what? It is totally the opposite. So in this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, and the hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. It's a sacred hadith because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is quoting Allah. He said, the Almighty Allah, the most exalted, said, those among my servants who hasten to break their fast are the most beloved to me. Allahu Akbar. The dearest of all my servants are those who hasten to break their fast. You know, I look at it in the light of this ayah. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah tested you by the means of fasting. But He wants to give you ease. He doesn't want to ruin yourselves. Nor does He want nor allow you to ruin your own selves. لا يريد بكم العسر does not want to give you hardship sunset go ahead and break your fast that leads me brothers and sisters to answer a very crucial question which is our Muslim brothers and sisters in the Scandinavian countries where their fasting sometimes reaches 20 plus hours 21, 22 hours of fasting so some of them suggest, uh, I don't know based on what, why don't we follow Mecca, Umul Qura? They have 16 hours of fasting, 
So we will fast with them and break our fast with them. I do not see this either in the book of Allah nor in the sunnah of the Prophet What I see, the sunnah of the Prophet is to hasten to break your fast whenever it is sunset, not before. And what I see in the book of Allah, but you just said in the same course of ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ Allah wants to give you ease. He doesn't want to ruin you. He doesn't want to make things difficult for you. And it is difficult for us. And that's why he said, مَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخْرَ Any Muslim who is physically fit, he is healthy, but cannot afford to fast the 22 hours. I know it's not affordable for most people. You skip fasting on that day and you make it up. You want to make it up during winter? You want to make it up when the night is longer than the daytime? You want to make it up when the daytime is only like 10 hours? You're most welcome. But you do not intend to fast at dawn and you break your fast at Asr. No, Hatta. Hatta Ra'iya. Kul wa shrabu. Hatta yatabayyana lakum al khaytu al abiyadu min al khaytu al aswadi min al fajr. Thumma atimu siyama ila al layl. The final destination is the nightfall. So if the night doesn't fall, if the sun doesn't set, then you do not break your fast. Oh, I cannot afford, I cannot take it anymore. I, my, my headache is going to kill me. Go ahead and break your fast. And then make it up some other days. Um, the following hadith is a long hadith and that's why I prefer that we take a short break and inshallah when we return we'll tackle the remaining hadith in this chapter please stay tuned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in seven different ways of recitation. Similarly, Maryam alayhi salam, she's a woman by herself. She doesn't even have a husband who's ever touched her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted a child to Maryam alayhi salam. Look at that. She said that, how will I have a child? How will I have a child whilst I've never even been touched by a man? One of the unique things about the story is that it's not like Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses. Can you imagine that Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses? He became sick from the effect that this ayah ended up having on his, on his mind at that moment. about how to be a great father to our children and that's from looking at Yaqub salam, the father of Yusuf salam. I'm your brother Asim Khan please join me for this episode of Gems from Surah Yusuf Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers and sisters. I am your brother Wasim Kempson. Please join me as we journey through the Quran, identifying particular ayat, verses, and stories of the prophets with a view to improving our behavior. Please join me exclusively on Huda TV on Way to Behave. that we are going through today where people are fighting with each other 
to establish superiority. Join me as we go through lessons from Surah Al-Hujrat. Brothers and sisters, Allah has prepared for us gardens and beautiful things in the hereafter for those who do certain deeds. So please, my brothers and sisters, join me with this program, inshaAllah ta'ala, to talk about the rewards for everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us to do or our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has encouraged us to do for those who pray, fast, or do certain deeds in our face, bi'iznillah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all what we do. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers are area code 002 then 0238555132. Alternatively, area code 002 then 01005469323. WhatsApp numbers area code 001347806125. And finally, area code 001361489150. Uh, you can also reach us on uh, Facebook page M Salah Official or on the YouTube channel uh, which would also appear on the bottom of the screen for your reference. Muhammad from the USA uh, is on the line. Assalamu alaikum brother Muhammad. Muhammad. Brother Muhammad, you're live on the program. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So uh, I called you yesterday uh, requesting you to make dua. So you had asked for my full name. So my first name is Muhammad and my last name is Bari. Okay, I got your name, Brother Muhammad Bari. Barakallahu feek. May Allah bless you and your family and ease your way. Ameen. Yeah. Do you have any questions? So my, yeah, so... Um, Yes. So uh, for tahajjud, is it necessary that we get up and pray two rakats before we make dua? Or is it enough just we make dua at the third part of the night? Well, the word tahajjud refers to the prayer, not only to the dua. So if you get up, then you get up to pray. Okay? وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدَ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا this ayah instructs and guides the Prophet ﷺ to recite the Qur'an in the night prayer in order to be raised to a very special status, a praiseworthy position on the Day of Judgment, which is a position of the intercession or the uh, shafa'ah. So tahajjud refers to the prayer. And then you take advantage of praying, of offering the night prayer, of praying at night to supplicate in your sudud or before making tasleem, uh, or in the water prayer, in the last rak'ah, and so on. Barakallah feek, Brother Muhammad. I want you to pay close attention to the following hadith, brothers and sisters. But before, because I have a few questions, I would like to tackle them. The first, Sister Maya Hadi is asking, uh, where can we get the hadith that you are mentioning? Uh, French translation of Riyadh al-Salihin, but the number of the hadith, well, Inshallah, pray for us that we would like to launch Huda in French as well. You know that we launched Huda in Spanish, Masha'Allah, uh, since last Ramadan. And uh, hopefully, Inshallah, we would have Huda in French, Inshallah. But for the time being, let me um, ask the brothers to post a link where you'd have all the ahadith of Riyadh al-Salihin in order, the Arabic with the English translation as well. 
it should appear on the bottom of the screen inshallah once the brothers have it uh, ready um, uh, the following question Nashra Rubaya I'm going for Hajj with my mother and sister from Bangladesh and my uncle will be coming from the UK and will meet us in Mecca as we're going from Bangladesh to Mecca with the Mahram and so on. So she's asking about traveling from Bangladesh to Mecca uh, to perform Hajj, she and her mom, then uh, their uncle or her uncle will join them in Mecca, inshallah. Mm, you know, I, I like to say that uh, Imam Malik and Imam al-Shafi'i give a concession that if you're traveling with a safe company, with a group of people, like nowadays for Hajj or Umrah, that is permissible even if the Muharram is not available. Um, Sister Sita Karki, she's saying, and I'm not sure if I'm reading the question right, she says, our husband lives with another woman on one side of our own room and is not able to help us with anything of our children. May Allah guide us to what is best. This is odd, this is strange, and this is not uh, either Islamic nor humane at all. In the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كَفَى بِالْمَرْءِ إِثْمًا أَنْ يُضَيِّعَ مَنْ يَعُولُ If you cannot afford to help your wife and your children, why would you pursue another marriage? I'm assuming this is a legitimate relationship. Okay, you're not even capable to take care of your family and your kids. So you should strive hard to provide for them and to take care of your, uh, their needs first. Uh, here is the link to the list of Riyadhul Salihin, a hadith in order <coughs> with the English translation. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> Idris from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum, Idris. Uh, wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu ya sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. Go ahead. Uh, sheikh, I, have, I had a question uh, that I normally read or uh, uh, view the videos on the oh. YouTube or uh, some other websites. Uh, the correct uh, uh, doing of uh, major ablution. Uh, some I saw that uh, they told me that uh, uh, sniffing the water uh, through your uh, nose is not uh, necessary. Uh, it's uh, accepted as you do uh, while doing a uh, normal uh, ablution. So is uh, sniffing uh, the water till it burns inside my uh, nose uh, the look, necessary, important, or, or uh, the normal wudu type of uh, washing the nose uh, would do it for me. Thank you. Thank you, brother Idris from Pakistan. The uh, ideal ghusl which is to let the major impurity that you're referring to, its sunnah is to begin by, after washing your prophet, to begin by performing wudu. So if you're going to perform wudu, then rinse in the mouth and the nose, according to the more correct view, is a must as well, and is included in washing the face. Um, Sister Mary, Pokaru is asking, Salaamu Alaikum, can you please tell me what is the dua to send the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu in the morning and the evening so he can intercede for us on the Day of Judgment. The last part of Tashahud when you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. That is called as salatul Ibrahimiyya. And this is the best way to send the uh, Salutation upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to fulfill what Allah says, in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. So if you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayt ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim, wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad, kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim, fil alamin inna kahmidun majid. This is just perfect. A short version to say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa alihi wa sallim tasliman kathira. So you send both the peace and salutation upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you say much. Barakallahu Fikum. Uh, now with the hadith. Hadith number 1237 on Abi Ibrahim, Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa radiyallahu anhumah qal, 
سرنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو صائم فلما غربت الشمس قال لبعض القوم يا فلان انزل فاجدح لنا فقال يا رسول الله لو أمسيت قال انزل فاجدح لنا قال إن عليك نهارا قال انزل فاجدح لنا قال فنزل فجدح لهم فشرب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم قال إذا رأيتم الليل قد أقبل منها هنا فقد أفطر الصائم وأشار بيده قبل المشرق In this hadith Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa May Allah be pleased with him and his father narrated that once we were with the messenger of Allah peace be upon him traveling and he was fasting when the sun set he said to one of us Oh so and so, get up and make sawiq for us. What is sawiq? Mixing uh, the uh, paste with water so that we can drink it like a paste. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, why not wait till the evening? He said, dismount and make sawiq for us. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, why not wait till the evening? Again, the Prophet ﷺ said, Dismount and make sawiq for us. He said, It is still daytime. He said, Dismount and make sawiq for us. Ijdah lana. So he dismounted and he made sawiq for them. And the Prophet ﷺ drank it. Then he said, When you see the night has come from here, then let the fasting person break his fast and he pointed to the east or the eastern side first of all the word ijdah and the mijdah the word sawiq is a food or a type of food which is made from a flour of uh, barley and then it is mixed with water you know how you guys like to drink lassi you know, something sort of, it's mixed with water. There's something called mijdah, which is like a long, huge wooden fork. Stick with a fork by the end in order to stir that emulsion. So he said, Enzil fajdah lana, fix it for us and give us to bake our fast. Apparently he was climbing a dead palm tree, um, like, you know, collecting some dates. And when the Prophet ﷺ realized it is sunset, he said, Enzil fajdah lana, come down, dismount, and beg us the sawiq in order to break our fast. Serve us the sawiq to, bring our, uh, to break our fast. But the, the man was on top of the dead palm tree, so he is in a higher place. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I still see the daytime. It's still daytime. He said, dismount and ijdah lana, prepare the iftar for us. Three times and finally he dismounted. Because he was kind of worried, like it's not sunset yet. But it was sunset, he wanted to see the complete darkness. The Prophet wasallam said, no, not necessary. What is necessary is, as he said, when the sun set, فَقَدْ أَفْتَرَ الصَّائِمْ إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ اللَّيْلَ قَدْ أَقْبَلَ مِنْ هُنَا When you see the night fall and has come from here and he pointed to the east and the east is where sun rises every morning but it sets on the opposite so when you see it dark okay on the east that means it's already sunset and it is already a night fall and it is already fulfilled as Allah the Almighty says ثم أتم الصيام إلى الليل. Go ahead and uh, break your fast. Sometimes uh, we used to see that in Texas. Subhanallah, sunset completely, but the, the 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 sky is still bright. So some people were reluctant to break their fast, especially in flat areas, not in hilly areas. So no. Go ahead and break your fast once it is sunset, especially with the timetable. It says sunset. You go out, you, do, you don't see any sun anymore. You don't have to go to the field to chase it. You don't have to climb a mountain in order to see where the sun has set already or not. 
you see that the sun set according to your um, with the naked eye regular view go ahead and break your fast that is the meaning of the hadith do not exaggerate do not be extreme this is the message that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in this hadith then hadith number 1238 قال إذا أفطر أحدكم فليفطر على تمر فإن لم يجد فليفطر على ماء فإنه طهور This hadith is a fair hadith and a sound hadith The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in this hadith what kind of iftar is more recommended You know some people like to break their fast on spicy food You know what I mean You know, some people cannot wait to eat biryani once it is sunset or once the adhan is cold. <laughs> some people eat watermelon, they drink juice. It's halal to eat anything that is lawful to eat once it is sunset. But the recommendation of the Prophet ﷺ is to break your fast on the dates. It is sweet, it is nutritive, it has a lot of fibers. It is very healthy and also it is good for your stomach as to alert your stomach to start executing the digestive excretions. So by the time you pray Maghrib, okay, you have alarmed your stomach and the rest of your digestive system already. You did not start right away with a heavy meal. You know what I mean? So the Prophet ﷺ recommended to break your fast on A biryani. Once we were hosted by some Pakistani family and it was sunset and normally we eat the qajur, the tamr, the dates and there is the finest dates which is the majdul type. So every day uh, we eat that at iftar but instead I found them serving right before the maghrib prayer and after the adhan they were serving something fried So I ate one and it was jalapeno stuffed with cheese and fried and crumbled bread. You break your fast on spicy jalapenos, but they like it. Okay, alhamdulillah. So the sunnah is to break your fast on tamr. But if you do not have, or if you do and you still eat anything else, whatever you desire, The Prophet ﷺ said, if you don't have tamr, then you can break your fast by drinking water before eating any food, before eating your paya or biryani or kima or all the spicy food or the Arabic food. So drink water to declare breaking your fast. Then uh, after you pray maghrib, eat the heavy meal. فَإِنَّهُ tahur. The Prophet ﷺ has said, then drink water. It is purifying obviously if it is good water not the water which is contaminated with chlor or contaminated with pollution and so on pure the the main purpose of that is to not to invade the stomach with heavy food all of a sudden after a long fasting of 16 hours but to give it like a ring to seek permission huh? so that you allow the stomach to gradually start excreting its digestive excretion. You do not attack it all of a sudden with the heavy food. And the water is tahur, as the Prophet ﷺ said. It is purifying. Last hadith in this chapter and in this episode as well, hadith number 1239. عن أنس رضي الله عنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يفطر قبل أن يصلي على رطبات فإن لم تكن رطبات فتميرات فإن لم تكن تميرات حسى حسوات مما I know some people may ask you know you suggested to eat a few dates or drink water then you pray maghrib then you can go ahead and attack the heavy meal as you wish. Where did you get this from? From this hadith. Anas radiallahu anhu who have served 
the Prophet ﷺ for so long, for 10 years. He said, whenever the Prophet ﷺ would be fasting, he used to break his fast before offering the Maghrib prayer. Qabla an yusalli. So the idea of, okay, I'm going to pray first, then I would break my fast is invalid. Do not postpone breaking your fast until after Maghrib prayer. That's not the Sunnah. That's an innovation. So go ahead and break your fast. Water, dates, but the priority is for the dates. And the dates are, you know, when we say dates in, in English, it refers to any dates. But there are tens of different types of dates. Amazing. And how people differentiate between the different types and tell you this is Sukkari, this is Majdul, this is Barhi, this is whatever. So the Prophet ﷺ recommended Ar-Rutabat. There is Rutab and there is Tamr. Ar-Rutab which is the fresh dates. It's very delicious. You know, you love to eat them in the Haram. And when they offer them, uh, a lot of people make tables. And even on Mondays and Thursdays throughout the year. So Rutab which is the fresh dates. فَإِلَّمْ تَكُنْ If you don't have fresh dates, then dry dates. And the Sunnah is to eat the mutran, you know, three or five. فَإِلَّا تَكُنْ تُمَيْرَاتِ If you don't have any, neither fresh dates nor dry dates, حَسَى حَسْوَاتِ مِنَ الْمَاءِ He would drink a few handful of water, and by that he would declare breaking his fast. By that we'll finish the chapter, brothers and sisters. And inshallah in the next chapter we'll be talking about what are other things that a fasting person should observe besides abstaining from eating, drinking, and having an intimate relationship? By the end, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us what we don't know and to benefit us of what we learn. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna ilma walhamdulillahi ala kulli hal wa na'udhu billahi min hali ahli nar. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Forgiving all about hell in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price